Okay, so here is the G5 video. So I'm just going to do one problem and then you're going to do three problems for the phase. Practice. Okay, so I'm doing number one from the phase. So use calculus to find all points on the graph of the equation below where the slope of the tangent line is negative four. Okay, so slope of the tangent line, where the slope of the tangent line is negative four. So this means that we want the points, okay, so we want the x and y coordinates where y prime is negative four, okay? So here's the graph that we're dealing with. This is the graph of, I think this is an ellipse, okay? Not, not quite a circle, like an elongated type of circle. And, you know, you could just kind of, uh, you know, estimate like, like we've already talked about um, horizontal tangents. So we've got a horizontal tangent at that point. We've got another horizontal tangent here. There's some vertical tangents, you know, to the left and right. But this time they're asking for a, like a, a particular slope that is not going to be for a vertical or horizontal tangent. So the slope is not zero. It's not undefined. It's an actual number, uh, negative four. So, yeah, so guys, let me just think for a second because, okay, so so the slope being negative 4 would mean the rise over run is negative 4 over 1. So that would mean I'd have to go, if I were on the tangent line, I'd be going down 4, right 1. So let me just see something. And so let me find a situation where I can go down 4, right 1. Okay, so this, this length is 4, right, that length there is 4. This length here is one. So if I just go, if I put my, tan, my line like this, this has a slope of negative four because I go down four, right one. And then if I try to keep, if I try to not change the slope, you know, if I try to keep it tilted at the same angle and I move, 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 it looks like right about there, right right about at this point here, that'll be the location of a point on the graph that has a slope of negative four. But then, you know, because of the symmetry of this, I would have like uh, another one on the other side probably also. All right, well, we're gonna use calculus. So I've got to take the derivative. And in all of these problems, guys, it is implied it, it should be implied that it's dy dx. So, um, because this is the x-axis and that's the y-axis. All right, and so that's always going to imply that y is equal to y of x. So let me bring out the one-third because I just think it will be uh, easier to see in the one-fifth. Okay. Um, it's nice if you could make things look like ax to the n. All right, so that's what I've done here. Now I've got to use chain rule. All right, so the in and out, so x minus 2, one third blank to the second. So the derivative of this inside is 1, and the derivative of the outside is 2 thirds blank to the first, and then that goes back in the blank. All right, and if, you, if you're doing chain rule in your head at this point, guys, that's, that's great. You don't need to show what I'm showing. All right, so I'm bringing down this plus sign. So the derivative of this inside is 1. Okay, the derivative of y minus 1 is 1, but we need a y prime after a y derivative. So it's y prime that is coming down here. And then the derivative of this outside is 2 fifths blank to the first y minus 1 going back in there equals the derivative of 2 is 0. The biggest mistake I see people make is that when, when they've got just a constant on the right side, they just bring it down instead of taking its derivative. Okay, so now we've got to solve for y prime. And at this point, guys, um, let me see. You could handle this differently, but I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go 2 x minus 2 over 3, All right, and you'll see why. Because I'm going to have to do a keep change flip, so this is just going to be easier for me. Um, and then this is 
I guess I'll leave the y prime there. Y prime times two. Okay, so I'm gonna subtract this over to the other side and then the divide by that. So I'm gonna do it all in one step, if you don't mind, just to save room. So this is negative two x minus two over three all over two y minus one. And remember last year, guys, keep change flip was a theme. So if you can use it, um, you know, you should because this is not our final answer. If the final, if that was the final answer, then fine, leave it. But we are going to need to use this um, to figure out where y prime is negative 4. So if you need to use something along the way to the final answer, it is a good, good idea to sim at least simplify in ways like keep change flip and stuff. So keep change, flip, all right? And you will see that these twos actually will cancel. All right, so I get that y prime is, and let me, yeah, that's a negative five. So negative five x minus two over three y minus one. All right, so we've got to figure out where this, the points where this derivative is negative four. So at this point, um, all right, so we want locations where y prime is negative 4. So I'm going to take this. I'll distribute. So negative 5x plus 10 over 3y minus 3. We want that to be negative 4. And I will put the negative 4 over 1, and I will cross multiply. All right, so we want negative 5x plus 10 to equal negative 12y plus 12. Okay, I just distributed to, to save time. Now, here is the thing. We are going to have an x and a y in this equation. So what you want to do is you want to solve for either x or y. It's totally up to you which one. And then plug back into this original equation. And then that's going to give you an equation with, with a single variable that you can solve for and then figure out the points. So um, I guess I'll solve for x. So negative 5x is negative 12y plus 2. So x is negative 12y plus 2 over negative 5. Okay, so now I got to go to the back. All right, so, so here's the original equation. All right, original equation is x minus 2 squared over 3 plus y minus 1 over 5, I think, equals 2. All right. And then this is what we have, okay, from y prime equals negative 4, we have x equal to negative 12y plus 2 over negative 5. So we've got two equations. They both involve two variables. You're going to take this equation that you got from the condition of y prime being negative 4, and you're going to plug it back into the original. And then I wouldn't even bother with the algebra. I would just use my calculator from there, like I showed you last time. So that's what I'll do. So this is going in where the x was. <clears throat> All right, so this is negative 12y plus 2 over negative 5 minus 2 squared over 3. <clears throat> y minus 1 squared over 5 equals 2. All right, now in my calculator, 
That'll be y1. This will be y2. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. All right, so I go to my calculator, y equals. All right, parentheses. Mm. Now, you can either keep this. You could either put this in parentheses or you could use that alpha y equals thing. So if I go, if I go alpha y equals, this is going to bring me, bring me a fraction. So negative 12, you can't use y's here. So I have to use x, even though the x that we get in our calculator actually represents the y coordinate that we're looking for. All right, and then a minus two on the outside squared. And then I divide that whole thing by three. There's other ways of typing it in, but it'll be plus x minus one squared divided by five. And then I'm gonna put two in there. Okay, I'm still in my old window. Hmm, it's taking a long time. Okay, it's giving us a parabola, and then there's two going right through it. All right, my window happens to be pretty good. So now I'm going to find these intersection points and store them. So we're going to have two. We're going to have two points for our answers. And remember, these are y y coordinates that I'm about to get. So second calc intersect. Okay, so this right here, I'll put as this first y-coordinate. Gosh, I didn't leave much room. 0 0.0287, and then I'm going to store that as A. All right. So hit X, store it as A for later. Okay, back to the graph. Move over to here. And guys, you have um, you have graphing calculators on your Chromebooks if you don't have one at home. All right, so that's the second intersection. 1.9713, I'll store that as B. Hit X, store as B. Okay, and now I'm going to plug these back into this, back into this, and that's going to give me um, my x-coordinates, okay? And, um, you know, I just kind of like to do the table thing, so I'm going to plug this in here. Um, how should I plug it in? No, let me just do the home screen. All right, I already showed you the table thing. So this is negative 12a plus two divided by negative five. Okay, so that's the, the coordinate that corresponds, the x coordinate that corresponds to A. One, one, I guess, okay. And then the one that solves for B. Oh, you could do this, guys. You can go second enter, and that just brings it up again. And then where the A was, I put a B. Four, Point three three one one. Okay. Um, yeah, so there's that. So guys, these points, um, if you look on this graph, all right, this is about this is about a little bit more, more than negative, a right, little past zero and a little above. <coughs> Excuse me. A little past zero and a little above. So I don't know, I guess like about here is where one of the locations is. That's kind of where it looks like, look, that's what it looks like before. And this is like a little past four and super close to two. A little past four and then super close to two. So I'd say about there. You don't have to do this part, guys. I'm just helping, trying to help you visualize. So yeah, there they are. So right there, we've got a tangent line with a slope of negative four, 
And then right here, we have a tangent line with a slope of negative 4, which is kind of what, how I estimated it at the beginning. Okay, guys, I know these videos are long. It's because of the calculator stuff. I am sorry. Due to this, I am I'm really cutting down the practice, okay?